This is problem 4.1 from the book Looking for Pythagoras. And in this problem, we are looking at something called the Wheel of Theodorus. And the diagram is named for its creator, Theodorus of Cyrene, a former Greek colony. And Theodorus was actually a, a student of the Pythagoreans, not necessarily Pythagoras himself, but the whole group of people that were called the Pythagoreans. And he designed this wheel to help understand the idea of irrational numbers and the different lengths or how all of these hypotenuse lengths had relationships. So each of these, it's almost like a, a seashell shape, and each of these hypotenuses, hypotenuse, this hypotenuse, this one, each of these gets longer as we extend this on around. Although the one leg of each of these triangles continues to be one all the way around, the other legs will become or come from the other hypotenuse. So let's just kind of work our way around the circle and see if we can find some of these lengths. So this one is fairly simple because we have a leg one, so one squared is one, and another leg of one, so one squared is one. So the one plus the one makes a area of two, so that means the hypotenuse length is the square root of 2 for that triangle. Now I'm going to rotate it around so we can kind of keep it oriented as if we were working with these. So we now here still have this leg length of 1. So 1 squared is 1. We're just going to keep finding these hypotenuse lengths as we go. The square root of 2 squared, so you take the square root of 2 and you square it, you actually get 2. So whenever you take a square root and square it, so we take the square root of 2 squared, I get the 2 back. So, so if I square this side, I get 2. So 2 plus 1 is 3. So the area of this square out here would be 3, so the length is the square root of 3. And if for some reason you're not understanding how I'm getting these different lengths, you might want to go back to previous lessons dealing with the Pythagorean theorem and how to use it to find these different hypotenuse side lengths of these right triangles. So you might get the impression here pretty quickly that see there's a, a bit of a pattern with Theodorus's wheel because this side length remains 1, and 1 squared still is 1. If I take the square root of 3 and square it, so the square root of 3 squared, we're going to get 3. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a squared is 1, b squared is 3, so 3 plus 1 is 4, so that's c squared, so the side length here is the square root of c squared, or the square root of 4, which actually is 2. So we know the solution to that one. But it's still the square root of 4. And really, we could go back to the first one and recognize that 1 is equal to the square root of 1. So we have the square root of 1, the square root of 2, the square root of 3, the square root of 4. And hopefully, you're kind of figuring out here that what's next should be 1 squared, 1 squared is 1. The square root of 4 squared, square root of 4 squared is 4. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 4 plus 1 is 5. So this would be the square root of 5. And I think it's safe to consider this would be the square root of 6. And the next one, the square root of 7, the square root of 8. And so this Theodorus's wheel gives us the first 12 square root lengths. In fact, it's a succession of the square root of 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 12 and could continue on infinitely and would create this sort of staircase enlarging 
circle as we go up, and each, each of these would be extended one more square root beyond that. By the way, square root of 9 is 3, so that's the other one in this set that we actually can calculate out. Now, the idea here is we really want to be able to get good at approximating how long these actually are. And so we have this little ruler, and on this ruler, see, so we could measure each of these, like the square root of 1 or 1 is right there on my ruler. So there's the first one. And the square root of 2 is approximately 1.4. So it's right here. And then the square root of 3, if I keep measuring, so I can mark on my ruler, it looks like the square root of 3 is about 1.7. So the square root of 3 So 1.7, approximately. See, and so we can approximate these. And then the square root of 4, we know is 2. So it looks like there's the square root of 4. It's a whole number. The square root of two, 4 is 2. It's one of our rational square roots. And the square root of 5 is about 2.2, so we're right around here, a little bit more than... That. So there's our square root of 5, around 2.2. And the square root of 6, right around 2.5-ish, somewhere in there, 2.6, just, just a little less than 2.5. Square root of 7, and yeah, we can just keep measuring these with this ruler to get an idea of approximately where they are. We could use a calculator too, but square root of 7 is about 2.7, pretty close to 2.7. Square root of 8, about almost almost 2.9, maybe 2.85. And we know the square root of 9 is 3. And see, we're kind of squeezing some of these in. There's lots of, there's really a lot of numbers between 2 and 3. The square root of 5, 6, 7, and 8 are all between 2 and 3 which makes sense because the square root of 9 is 3 and the square root of 4 is 2. So there, all those other square roots have to be in between. And we get to ones that are larger than 3. The square root of 10 is about 3.1, approximately. The square root of 11. So all I'm doing now is using this ruler right here. There's the square root of 11. To approximate these, 3.3, .3. it's about 3.3, .3. and the square root of 12, which is about 3.4. And see, and we're cramming these in on the ruler because there's a lot of square root numbers between numbers, and of course, as we go further up, there will be even more because if you think about our perfect square root numbers, just for a minute here, if I think of even on a wheel, the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of, of 9 is 3, so all those other square roots, the square root of 5, 6, 7, and 8 have to be between 2 and 3. All these square roots, 5, square root of 6, square root of 7, and the square root of 8 are all in between 2 and 3. See, between the square root of 1, there's only the square root of 2 and the square root of 3. There's only two numbers that are in between 1 and 2. So there aren't very many. And if we went even further to the square root of 16, which is 4, you see all of these, the square root of 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, are all in between 3 and 4 in terms of their value. And so what we want to be able to do now is we want to be able to look at numbers and say, you know, where is it between? Where is this square root approximately? 
where does it fit in our number system? And because the square root numbers are a part of our number system. So if I said the square root of 15, I would want to be able to say, well, yeah, the square root of 15 is going to be a little less than 4. I don't know exactly what it is, but I know it's more than 3 and less than 4 because it has to be between these two perfect square numbers. And so as we move into investigation 4, we're going to be doing a lot more work with actually figuring out what these square root number values are. Up to this point, in a lot of cases, we've just said, you know, that length, that's the square root of 10. And that length is the square root of 8. But now we want to be able to say, well, this, it's the square root of 8, but it's almost 3. And this is the square root of 10, but it's just a little bit more than 3. And do a better job of being able to now estimate what the actual values of different square root numbers are. And so that'll get you started on uh, investigation 4.1, problem 4.1. There are more questions related to problem 4.1 in the book and in the investigation and looking at where these numbers are between, like where's the square root of the square root's between what two whole numbers. Well, you know the square root of 2 is between 1 and 2. So we're going to be doing a lot of between. Where's this square root between? If I said the square root of 21, where's the square root of 21 between? You know it's between 4 and 5 because it has to be less than the square root of 25 and more than the square root of 16, which is what those are. So lots of between questions here where these square roots lie. So it's time to get good at estimating these and knowing approximately where they are. So that'll get you started on problem 4.1.